Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Pat Linger, and I'm here today honored and privileged to be able to speak for the God of all creation who gave the life that we know as Bill Pushkas. I'd like to read from Bill's Bible. Lisa, bless her heart, let me take it home last night and I had the opportunity to peruse down through it and go to some of my favorite verses and to look and see what some of Bill's favorite verses were. Because when you go through the Word of God and you got a hunger for it, you underline things, you circle things, you put stars by them, <laughs> you write at the side of them, you know, what God's telling your heart at that time. And I found so many so many of the very things that I circle in my Bible, that I underline in my Bible, are so important to Bill as well. I'd like to read from the, from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, starting with verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Shall we bow and pray? Our Father and our God, how amazing you are. Lord, you give life, and you give life abundantly. You give love. You shine your light, Lord, in all the dark places. And you bring men, women, boys and girls to that light. And you give them life. We pause right here at the start to say thank you for your word that is always faithful. That you've equated your word with the power of the resurrection of Jesus. That Jesus is was and always will be the Word. Thank you for Bill's life. Thank you for the, for the love that he had for Anita, children, Lisa and Rob, grandchildren, India, Jackson, Jonathan. We thank you, Lord, that when you brought Bill and Anita together, that you formed that union as you hoped that it would be, as you said in the book of Malachi, that you gave us marriage so that we would raise up godly children. Could see that played out through Bill and Anita's life. We thank you most of all, God, that where Bill is right now, that even though he's not here among those who love him and know him so well, but you've taken him home to yourself. And Lord, that his eyes are seeing splendor and beauty beyond all we could imagine in your very presence. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for Bill. Thank you for where he is right now. Jesus, thank you for your love and your sacrifice. May the things that we say and do this day bring glory and honor to you. <coughs> Comfort our hearts. All, you're the comforter, and you're the God of all comfort. Thank you that you do. Jesus, in your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. I think now we're going to be showing the, the video.
infatuation But ooh, it's lasted so long Now I find myself wanting To marry you and take you home
you'd like. Rob, never met you before, and I think you're probably watching right now with the technologies that God has allowed us to have. <coughs> Tell you what, Bard, that's the kind of letter, get up here, that's the kind of letter every son, every dad would like to hear from his son. Okay, hi Rob, hi everybody. So, my brother states, my dad was a man's man, the epitome of outdoorsman. He loved being outside in God's creation so much it would make him cry. He just loved the beauty of it all. He taught me how to fish and hunt. This is all we did when I lived at home, always fishing and being outside. He taught me how to play basketball, baseball, and football, how to ride a bike, how to tie a tie for my suit. He loved to trap animals for their fur. He was just born in the wrong century. He would have loved to have been a trapper. Yes, my dad was 80 years old, but he was a full of life. He was constantly cutting wood for winter, keeping that house warm. He built a deck for my mom so she could get around with her walker and be able to sit outside in the sun. This is why his death was such a shock. God had other plans for him. They are good plans. He is with his heavenly father now, enjoying. Enjoying new air and a new body. This makes me smile. Yes, I'm sad because he's not here, but he's looking down on us. There is a big reunion going on with Dad's parents, his brother Chuck, his sister-in-law, and our cousin Tina. What joy they must be feeling. I love you and miss you. Until that day comes for me, Dad. I'm proud to be your son. You raised me well. Love, Rob. God of all creation is a rewarder. And I'm sure he's applauding too, Lisa, both you and Rob. Oh. I knew just exactly what I was going to say the whole time before I got up here. <laughs> but one of the things that so struck me as I got to look through Bill's Bible and looking at what he had written in the margins, explanations that he'd given. Yeah, right there in the book of John, chapter 1, verse 1. Circle, arrow, circle, arrow, circle, arrow, and then go up before the beginning began. Because you always start at the front of the book, unless you're like me and just a little bit weird, then you'll start at the back of the book, which I did before I came to a saving knowledge of Christ. And I'll tell you, the book of Revelations will flat scare the hell out of you <laughs> when you read it from without knowing that this is actually the victory. Actually, the victory. But just a few things here that, that God laid upon my heart as I went through here was freedom. Something that we, we hold dearly here in this United States of America. Bill signed up and went into the armed services. I believe it was the Navy. And uh, thank you, Bill, for your service to this country, for the freedoms that we enjoy. While he was in the Navy, Nita shared this with me yesterday, that they were, they'd been kind of dating. And she was kind of young. Like about 19, am I getting that right? 18. You're 18, 18. And Bill was in the Navy and he called and he says, I'm going to come home. And he says, but I'm going to come home and I'm going to marry you. <laughs> but if I'm not going to marry you when I come home, I'm not coming home. <laughs> Anita called her. Her mom and dad were on vacation out in California and said, you got to come home because I want to get married. But he said, Anita said she didn't talk to her mom, said she talked to her dad. Dad, I want to get married. 
Mom had said, we're not coming home, we're on vacation. <laughs> Dad said, we're coming home. And so it began 65 years of a wonderful marriage. My hat's off to you, to both you and Bill. Freedom. We have freedom. John, from Bill's Bible, John, 1 John chapter 1, verse 29. The next day, John, John the Baptist, seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. There's a star by it. There's a star by that. I went on over to John chapter 3, and verse 16. Underlined, underlined, underlined. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. 1940 to 19 to 2020, this is 2020, sometimes my math gets a little off, 80 years young, 80 years young. I love to read in the, in the, the obituary was talking about Bill was such a soul winner, a soul winner for God, for Christ. This is the heart, this is the freedom, the freedom that, that God had given Bill to say, you have the promise of eternal life, Bill. I get the feeling that Bill was maybe a little larger than life, a man of, 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 of big stature, strong, but also a man of, of big heart. Uh, I don't know that I'm going to say this right, but I get the feeling that Bill uh, was pretty high on life. Didn't need no alcohol or drugs, but the fresh mountain air, the freedom, the freedom that he had to look at a, a person and say that person needs to be in heaven. They need to hear about Jesus. They need to hear about Jesus. Freedom to love. <laughs> yeah, you can see that. You can see a freedom to love. To love the things that really matter. First off, people. First off, his bride, Anita. His daughter, Lisa. His son, Ron. Granddaughter, India. Grandsons, Jackson and Jonathan. And then I'm going to, I could start naming all the names that I know that I remembered off there, but I'd leave somebody out. <laughs> but this family, and as I looked at the, the video and watching the pictures go by, and you see all the pictures of family, of family. Yeah, and then there was that one where he kind of dressed up a little different. <laughs> I'm not sure I wanted to hear the story about what that was all about, and I hope that I do before I get done. Yeah. Oh. The next place that God took me in Bill's Bible was to the other beginning. It was over in Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. This was after John's beginning. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And right there, a little line out to the side, Bill had wrote Elohim. It's plural. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. You get a feel for the depth of Bill's doctrine as you look through his Bible, through the Scripture, and what he'd written out to the side. God went on in day two, day three, day four, day five, day six, and I get the feeling that Bill really understood this, that when and get over to verse 26 of chapter 1. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. 
And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And I get the feeling that Bill and I were kind of kindred spirits in a way, in that he understood that just kind of hang here for a second and, and, and think about this. And God called it very good. It was before the fall. Don't rush off to the fall over there in chapter 2 and 3. But stay right there when the morning, the morning sun sang for joy. I was talking, and they were telling about when they'd get up on the mountains and sometime it almost cried. I believe it was a big sky. It had taken the, taken the lift to the top of the mountain, except for Anita, who, who stayed down pretty close to a tree. I, I'm not going to call you a tree hugger, but I will call myself a tree hugger, because I had been there, I would have been right with you, Anita. I remember her when I was going to, to first pour oil in, into the gearbox on a windmill, and Dad drove me out there, and I, I started to climb up, and he gave me lots of encouragement, and it took quite a while for me to get up there, and uh, then he said, Son, we've only got a little bit of time today to get everything done, so go ahead and take the second step, too. And Because uh, I wasn't really wanting to go up there. But, but that's where I'd have been, and I'd been with you, but Lisa was sharing with me how when he got to the top of the mountain, just the beauty, the beauty of what God had created and allowed his eyes to see, tears would come to his eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Freedom. Freedom in Christ to really live. God called it in John 10, 10, once again, another heavily underlined scripture in Bill's Bible. Abundant life. The thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but I came to give abundant life. That is that abundant life, having Christ in your heart, knowing the freedom that he's given you to really live. And I get the feeling that that, that was Bill. He really lived. And Lisa would talk about, she told me about how when, when dad came in the house, you know, it might be really quiet till dad got in the house. <laughs> and, and I can understand that because I wear hearing aids now, and we who are mostly deaf, we are generally pretty loud. <laughs> but it's even more than that. It's a love of life. It's a love of the life that God gave us. Huge. Huge. I then went on over to Luke. I'm going to get there. Luke chapter 10. And I looked at Luke chapter 10, verse, verse 27. And then I went on back up to 25. And it says, Behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? Thou. And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy might and thy neighbor as thyself. The first and greatest commandment. Love the Lord your God. When you've been freed by Christ to fully live, you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, all your soul, your strength. And then he gives you that love to love the things that he's created, mostly the humans, Winning souls to saving knowledge of Christ. Woo! Loving his family. Loving his neighbors. Wanting everyone to come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> uh, we may not be large in number here this day. I understand, Anita, that you guys moved all over the country. Friends everywhere. I hope there's some of them out there that or maybe watching today. A lot of friends, 80 years young. Wow. Built a 14 by 9 deck <laughs> this last fall. As I looked over the trappings that Lisa and Nita put up here, and uh, you see the antelope horns. I'm guessing those are the ones that he shot this last fall. <laughs> Went out and shot the antelope, processed all the meat, Got a nice, nice set of antlers there. I look at his arrows that I'm sure he was a bow hunter, archery man. 
You don't have gloves like that if you're just shooting shotguns and rifles. You have them when you're an archery man. Enjoying what God has put on this earth. I looked over at John Wayne and yep, he was my hero too, Bill. Think about what life really is. Life is adventure. And it's adventure because this God that loved us and created us and gave us life. When A.W. Tozer started into the attributes of God, I think he left one out. He did a great job, understand, he's a great minister, a godly man, but I think he left out the wildness of God. The good wildness of God. In creating everything, giraffes, I mean like, whoa. <laughs> Who would think about making giraffes or rhinoceroses or, or humans? It's the wildness of God. And then he gave us the, the free will to choose. Bill chose life. To really live life. Freed, freed from, freed from the, the sin of lust to love one woman all his life, beloved Anita. You can see it in the, the picture of them dancing. You can see it when they got close together and they put their cheeks together. Anita said, yeah, I liked it better when he didn't have the beard, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got the same thing from my bride. Look over. Ron had said that perhaps he was born a century too late in uh, talking about the, the mountains, the Rocky Mountains. And, uh, this just made slava start together at the corner of my mouth when I saw that tray of them trouts laying there. So, whoa, yeah. Fly rod in hand. I was looking over at the, at the Lewis and Clark picture and uh, seeing where they had been, moving up in Bill and Nita, moving up here into this country with, with Lisa and India. And uh, I can imagine Bill looking over that and going, okay, there's the Missouri and that's where it went and he's trapped and I've seen that. And, and then you come down to the Yellowstone and go up there. And I would dream like Bill. Oh man, to have seen that, to have been with Lewis and Clark on that deal. Even just to see it now is something that of beauty. Thank you, God. You don't enter into things like that unless you've got a heart of gratitude and thankfulness. Thank you, God, for letting my eyes see this. Freedom to love the, the beauty of God's creation. Not that Bill would worship it, but he enjoyed it. He enjoyed it. I think God was secretly clapping up there in heaven going, Look at it, Bill. Enjoy it. I made it for you. Let your eyes see it. Bill was freed to love the Word of God. As I was looking back through, Anita and Lisa said that Isaiah, the book of Isaiah and the book of Romans were some of his favorite. You could see where in the book of Romans, boy, the pages got real thin there. You could tell they'd been turned up a lot. There was a lot of a lot of underlining, a lot of circling. Free to enjoy the abundant life. To really live. To really live. I looked at the bobcat and the badger. Yeah, I'd love to have been a trapper too, Bill. Tried a little bit. One of them was roadkill. Am I, am I correct in that? Was one of them... I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't remember, perhaps one of these was Lynx and the Badger might have been a roadkill that he picked up. That's all right, don't waste anything. Don't waste anything. The American flag. We all loved our country. We loved the freedom that we had. I have a lot of things going through my mind and my heart, but I do know that the mind can only absorb as much as the hind end can stand. <laughs> and this was not about me, but it was about Bill, it was about God, it was about the Lord Jesus Christ. But I wanted to go to the book of Isaiah, 
once again highlighted in yellow, underlined. He went to I went to Isaiah chapter 40 and started at verse 29. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increased strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. The strong man that laid down the, the tile in the, in the kitchen here just this fall, cleaned up all the yard, got the firewood cut, stacked, <laughs> taking care of his family. Taking care of his family. I hope and pray that I can keep moving and be that resilient to love life every day. To enjoy every day, even at the age of 80. I saved this for the last because it. <sighs> strong in the heart. Bill had wrote this in the front cover. And I went to the front cover to look because that's where I wrote the things that really mattered too. <laughs> The yearning for greatness. And every one of us has that inside us. We have a, we have a knowledge of, of there's something more. That there's something greater. And then we have that knowledge that there is life after death. And there's a paradise there that got lost. And somehow God is going to bring us back into it. In this yearning for greatness, Bill put four bullet points. The first one yearn to be like him. The second one was yearn to be a strong Christian. Not weak, but a strong Christian. He didn't just want to be a Christian, he wanted to be a strong Christian. And he had shared with me how when, if they were eating in a restaurant, how if there was someone that was using Adverbs is what I call them, corral words. Um, profanity, yeah, okay, that's the, the, the more understandable name for it. If they were using profanity, the bill would get up and he would go over and he would tell them, I do not want my wife and my kids to hear that. And if it doesn't stop, I'm going to leave and take them with me. But God would season Bill's talk with grace. Anita said that most of the time they would stop and then when they got up to leave they'd come over and say thank you. <laughs> That's grace. God giving us what we don't deserve and allowing us to, to treat others how he desires us to be strong but season it with grace. The third yearn bullet point was to be a submissive Christian. It's not weak. It's being submissive. Following God. Following Christ. Being with others. And going where God was taking us as a people. As believers. The fourth bullet point was yearn to be a soul winning Christian. Jesus said, I tell you the truth. That if you just give someone a cold drink of water. A young one, a cold drink of water, you will not lose your reward in heaven. Daniel goes on to talk about how those who win souls to a, a saving knowledge of Christ in all eternity will shine brighter than the stars in the sky. Whew. Yeah, I bet Bill's shining. Pictured Bill. As his spirit and soul was gathered to the Lord Jesus Christ. And maybe you did too, or maybe you can. But you picture Jesus welcoming Bill to heaven, to paradise. As he takes Bill's rugged old face in his hand. And he looks in his eyes. He says, well done. Good 
and faithful servant. Lord, make us more like Bill each and every day. Each and every day. So we bow in prayer. Ah, Lord. Lord Jesus. Thank you for what you have done. For your work upon the cross. Your finished work upon the cross. That everyone who believes in you. Who trusts in you. That's what that word means. Relies upon you. That you paid the penalty. For each and every one of our sins. The sins of the whole world. So that whosoever would believe in you. Have eternal life. Your word, 2 Corinthians 5, said that you were in the world, Jesus, reconciling the world back to yourself. Back to yourself, O oh God, not counting men's sins against them. Thank you, Jesus, that you loved us so much. Thank you, Jesus, that you allow your love to fill. Fill and all the others that you're going to send into to our lives still yet, who seem larger than life and full of life, that we may see you through their love that you're pouring into them. Thank you for the lions that Bill has poured out, poured himself out into. Ah, oh, Lord, build them up. Encourage them in your word and your might the height, the depth, the breadth, and the width of the love that you have for them and for each one of us. Comfort those who mourn, and may we grieve rightly and justly, knowing that we're going to see Bill again, Jesus, because of what you did upon the cross. Such a short time, O oh Lord, that we have here in remembrance, but may the memories that we are going to keep and remember in the days to come refresh our hearts, Lord God, because you desired the joy to be in us. We give you thanks. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And it is in your holy name that we pray. Amen. This concludes our time here at the Stevenson Chapel. And I believe that now we will be going out to the Veterans Cemetery, to the, to the new chapel out there. Thank each and every one who tuned in. God bless you and keep you. Cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you, both now and forevermore and evermore and evermore. God bless. You're most welcome, Lisa.
behalf of the VFW, I present you with these cases. Bill set the stage again for it, didn't he? <laughs> God said, greater love has no man than this, that he would lay down his life for another. And he spoke of himself. God himself laying down his life for us so that we could be with him, that he wanted us with him. His bill, like so many others, when he took that oath, declared that he would lay down his life for us. Thank you, Bill. In the Word of God, 1 John chapter 3, verse 2, Beloved, now are we the sons of God? doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Book of Revelation, they shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of water, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Jesus said unto her from the book of John, chapter 11, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, Yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. And I gotta tell you, every time I I hear that that sad song taps get played, and, uh, you know, choked up and, and uh, yeah, we're kind of coming to the to the end of our sharing of life together here today. This is, we're giving away life. We're hour, hour and a half. We'll never have that hour, hour and a half again. We're, we're giving each other life. And I like to think of it that way. And I like to think of it as God is alive. That Bill is alive in the very presence of God. I'm a movie buff. I will flat out. I love the great movies, all the John Waynes. I love the, the Lord of the Rings. They all have that, that sense that there's something really good. And then there's a great adventure. And then there's some evil that comes in. And just when it seems like it's just about no hope, there's a Savior. It's the history of God. It's the history of the Bible. In the Lord of the Rings, there's this little bitty hobbit and this great big wizard. Maybe you've seen the movie. Maybe you haven't. But they're standing up on a parapet. And now looking across there, they can see an army of hundreds of thousands. And there's just a few of them, kind of the charge of the light brigade thing. And the little hobbit looks out across there. And he's all got his sword and all his uniform on. And he says, I never thought it would end like this. And the old wise, wise wizard looks down at this little hobbit. And he kind of gets a twinkle. His eye. And he says, end? Oh, no. This is not the end. For when the gray rain curtain slowly fades away, it all turns to silver glass. 
and across the sea, white shores, a far green country under a swift sunrise. If we could just see it, well, we would know. But in our hearts, we know that there's more life beyond that than there is on this side of it. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. For as much as it has pleased Almighty God and His wise providence to take out this world unto Himself the soul of Belkushkas, we therefore commit His body to the ground, the earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. I used to worry. I knew that my dad, my granddad, I knew that my dad, I knew that my mom had all been creepy. And in my young, immaturity of Christianity, I thought, how can they do that? Jesus is going to come back someday. And they're going to need them bodies because they're going to reunite them. You know, the scripture talks about the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we are alive and we joined up with them when Jesus comes back. And worried that for several years, finally I asked my pastor, I said, what's going to happen? Because I'm a little worried about this. This is what they wanted, but I'm a little worried about this. He can take dirt from the ground and make you. He can gather the ashes together and put that body back together or we'll know when we get to heaven. I took great comfort in that. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of your life, a part of your grief, and a part of your joy as you shared Bill with me. Grace be unto you. The grace of God the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit. Fill your lives with joy, with great love, and with